topic today is solving equations and our goal, I can solve multi-step equations that have to, that I have to simplify before I solve. So we're solving multi-step linear equations, the same as the last video, uh, but sometimes before we can solve an equation, we need to first simplify the given expression on both sides of the equal sign. So example number one is one of those cases where we have to collect like terms on each side before we can solve. So if you take a look at this side of the equation, we have a 2x and a negative 4x that we can put together and be negative 2x. That plus 7 has nothing to go with, so we leave it as plus 7. And we're only going to work on one side of the equation at a time. So now that I have that side simplified, I'm going to put my equal sign down. And notice that I keep my equal sign lined up as best I can. That's good math form. On the other side of the equal sign, I have an 8 and a 6 that can go together. And that gives me 14. And of course, that minus 12x has nothing to go with it. So we just write it back down again. Now that I'm simplified on both sides of the equation, now I can just solve as normal. I need to get one side with letter terms on it and one side with number terms on it. So I'm going to let this side be my letter side and this side be my number side or my constant side. And I have to say to myself on this side of the equation, if I want only letter terms there, what's stopping that from happening? And of course, the answer there is that plus 7. So in order to get rid of that 7 so that I have only letter terms, I'm going to subtract 7. And to keep the balance of the equation, I subtract 7 from the other side as well. So this side is negative 2x. And on the other side, we have 7 minus 12x. So now I've accomplished my goal on this side of the equation. I have only letter terms. So now I move to the other side and I say, I want only numbers over here, nothing with a letter in it. So it's obvious that this negative 12x is in my way. So to get rid of a minus 12x, I add 12x to both sides. And if I add 12x to a negative 2x, I get a positive 10x. And on this side, of course, the 12x's are gone, and I'm left with just a 7. Now that I have only letter terms on one side and only number terms on the other side, now I have to get my x completely by itself. And of course, this 10 is multiplying the x. So in order to get it completely by itself, I need to divide. And if I divide by 10 on one side, I divide by 10 on the other side to keep the balance of my equation. So those 10s go away, and I'm left with x equals uh, 7 tenths or if you like it in decimal form better, 0 0.7. And I'm fine if you leave it as 7 over 10. Going to the next example, uh, sometimes you have to distribute through brackets and then collect like terms before you solve. And once again, we're working on each side separately. So for right now, think of there being a line down there that you cannot cross that line. We're going to expand and simplify on each side of that line first. Now remember, we reviewed the distributive law that says I have to multiply through the brackets by that 3. So this becomes 3x minus 3, and then we have that plus 1 on that side. Uh, on the other side in this stage, I'm going to use the distributive law, and I get 5x minus 10. Now, I can take this line away from here, as long as you remember that we're just working on each side individually. So I'm going to take a look at this side now and see if there's anything else I can do. And I see that I have a negative 3 and a positive 1 that can go together. So I put 3x minus 2 because negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. The other side of the equation is as simple as it can be. I have a letter term, I have a number term, and those two things cannot go together. They're not like terms. So I leave it as 5x minus 10. Now I'm quickly going to go through uh, the explanation again. I'm going to let this side be my letter side and this side be my number side. If I want only letters on this side, I have to get rid of my numbers. So I'm going to add 2 on both sides. If I add 2 on this first side, I'm left with 3x. And on the other side, I still have that 5x, but now I have minus 8. 
Now I have only letters on this side. That means I turn my attention to this side and I want just numbers on that side. So this 5x right here is in my way. So I need to get rid of that 5x by subtracting it on both sides of the equation. And now 3x and negative 5x is negative 2x. And on the other side of the equation, I'm left with negative 8. And now to get x completely by itself, I divide both sides by negative 2. Since 2 is multiplying the x. And of course, this, this, these two 2's cancel, and I'm left with just x on that side. And negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. Okay, so if you have brackets, expand and simplify, but make sure you simplify on each side separately. And then you go back to adding and subtracting to both sides of the equation. Next, we have an example where we need to get rid of the denominators before we solve. Now, the way we get rid of denominators is to multiply because a denominator is like a division. It's over 4. So to get rid of a division, we use multiplication. Now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put a big set of brackets around this side and a big set of brackets around this side, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Now these 4s cancel because 4 divided by 4 is simply 1, and 1 times anything is still that number. So I just have a 6x plus 2 on this side, and on this side I have a 20. Now I just have to get only letters on one side, only numbers on the other side. This side is obviously my number side because it has only numbers to begin with. So that means I need to get rid of the numbers off of this side. And I'm left with 6x. And over here I have 18. Now I need to divide on both sides of the equation by 6 because 6 is multiplying the x and I want it by itself. And so this becomes x equals, and of course 18 divided by 6 is 3. Now what happens if you have two denominators? Well, the best thing to do here is to multiply by the lowest common multiple of the denominator. And we talked about lowest common multiples before. Let's take all the multiples of 5. There's 5. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and for 3, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Oh, I got one that's common in here. That's the smallest common multiple of 3, and 5 is 15. It also happens to be what you get when you multiply the two of them together. That will always give you a common denominator, but sometimes it'll be a big number. So you should use the lowest common multiple. Now what I'm going to do with this 15 that we found as the lowest common multiple, or the lowest common denominator, is I'm going to multiply everything here by 15. And that is going to get rid of my fractions for me. Because this 5 goes into 15 three times. So I'm going to do that division before I do the multiplication. Now I'm going to do the multiplication and just multiply what's left. 3 times 3 gives me 9y. Over here, this 3 goes into 15 five times. And now I have 5 times 2y is 10y, but I had this negative here to begin with, so it's still negative 10y. And on the other side, 15 times 4 is 60. So now I actually have a very simple equation once I've gotten rid of my, y, my denominators. 9 subtract 10y on this side can be combined, and that's negative 1y equals 60. And to get the y completely by itself, I divide both sides by negative 1. Dividing by negative 1 is easy, it just switches the sign. So I have negative 60 on that side. Now lastly, we're going to do a word problem. Example 4 says, Randy borrowed $400 from his parents to buy a new snowboard. He plans to pay them a fixed amount each week. The amount still owing is modeled by A, for amount, equals 400 minus 50N where n is the number of weeks since Randy began to pay his parents. How much does he pay each week? 
Well, when we look at it, this is going down by $50 each week. So the amount he owes is decreasing by $50, which means that he's paying $50 every week. How much does he still owe after five weeks? Well, this is a formula for finding A if we know what N is. And we're told that N is the number of weeks. So if N is five, all I have to do is fill a five in here and then follow order of operations. So 400 minus 250 equals 100. And $50. So after five weeks, he still owes $150. And lastly, how many weeks will it take him to pay off the loan? Well, our equation was A equals 400 minus 50N. Now, when they say how many weeks will it take for him to pay off the location, the pay off the loan, we want how many weeks. So it's asking us to find this N. So if it's asking us to find N, we must know something about A once the loan is paid back. And of course, the next little IE here says the amount left on the left owing is zero. So if A is zero, and we're gonna sub a zero in where A was because we know the amount owing is nothing, now we have to figure out what N is to give us an A of zero. So I'm going to subtract 400 from both sides, and I get minus 400 equals negative 50n. And the reason I subtracted 400 from both sides is because this side already had only numbers, so I want only letters on this side. So I subtracted the 400 on both sides. And now I want n completely by itself. So if I want n completely by itself, it's being multiplied by negative 50. So to get rid of that negative 50, I divide. Opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I subtract, I divide by 50 on both sides of the equation. Those 50s cancel and I'm left with n, which is what I wanna know, the number of weeks. And negative 400 divided by 50 is eight. So therefore, it takes eight weeks to pay off the loan. And that is the end of today's lesson.